So a few years ago, I was really intrigued when a newly appointed superintendent started to blog and called it a culture of yes. A great title and a great aspiration. I've been thinking a lot about what a culture of yes means in a relationship, in a school, and in our communities. I've started to realize that maybe the first step in creating a culture of yes is actually to get beyond no. For me, a culture of yes means an openness to new ideas, the capacity to see opportunities rather than obstacles, and a willingness to take risks. Sometimes taking a risk is as simple as trusting ourselves just a little bit more, and sometimes it means trusting in the capacity of others to learn and to grow. Amongst the powerful learning principles of the Little Watt people is the notion of watchful listening. This means listening with all of our senses, listening with our eyes as well as with our ears, listening with our hearts as well as with our heads. I think that watchful listening is the key to getting beyond no. I've also been wondering about how our internal sense of yes or no impacts our willingness to take risks. Like many of you, I've been influenced by the work of Carol Dweck, the psychologist from Stanford. Carol's lifelong curiosity about mindsets and about the impact of labels was fueled by her experience with her grade six teacher, Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson sat her class by order of IQ. The smart kids sat at the front of the class and they got all the plum jobs. It was critically important for Carol as one of those smart kids that she not lose her place in the pecking order. Her fear of making a mistake, her fear of appearing stupid, kept her from taking risks. And as a result, she missed out on a lot of opportunities. Getting beyond no requires that we develop what Carol Dweck has called a growth mindset. The belief that through our efforts, our hard work, and with support, we can get better at just about anything. The conviction that uh, we can be inspired by the successes of others rather than threatened by it. And the understanding that we all learn from our mistakes. Sometimes we learn from our successes, but that we learn from our, our mistakes. Also, I've been wondering about what happens uh, if we listen really carefully to our own responses to the comments of others. And what does that tell us about our own mindsets? Partway through my master's program, I walked into a class on educational leadership. It was summer, it was hot, I was excited to see some of my friends and I couldn't wait to get started. I was shocked at the end of the class when the professor called me aside and said, Ms. Halbert, you do not belong in this program. How did he know? He didn't have a clue who I was, but based on my behavior in that one class, he had judged me as lacking. I was determined to prove him wrong through hard work and with all of the effort that I could bring to it. I was able to get beyond his no judgment of me because I had a growth mindset based on my previous experience as a learner. But what about people that haven't had those successes? What happens when they're faced with negative judgments? Can they persevere or do they back off in defeat? Are we creating the kinds of learning environments in our classrooms, in our schools, where we're building resilience so that we are developing the capacity to get beyond the no's that are inevitable in our lives. Are we providing the kind of feedback on a daily basis that is creating a growth mindset? I wonder. I'm also wondering about how my judgments of other people affect my interactions with them. I'm realizing increasingly that for me to develop a culture of yes in my own life, I need to get beyond my judgments expressed silently or otherwise of no. Let me tell you a story of a little boy who has taught me a lot about the magic that can happen when a no becomes a yes. Clifton, two years ago, was in grade six. He was struggling in just about everything. He was a challenge to his teachers, and he was a huge worry to his mother. He was a regular feature at the office by the time Pam, a new principal, arrived at the school. Pam was determined to change the image of the school from one of 
defeat, discouragement, and neediness to one of pride, strength, and resilience. She introduced a lot of positive changes. She encouraged all of her students to explore their interests and their passions. There were lots of good things happening, and yet Clifton continued to struggle. However, now when he was sent to the office, he took Pam up on her invitation. Each time he was sent there, he'd said, can I play the piano, please, please, please? And every time Pam would respond with no. No, Clifton, you need to do your work. No, Clifton, you need to behave yourself. No, Clifton, you've got to stop bugging other kids. No, Clifton, no, no, no. One day, Pam heard herself saying no for the umpteenth time. And she paused for a second, and she looked at Clifton. And she said, Clifton, can you play the piano? And he said, I think so. <laughs> so she said, well, let's see. They walked down the hall to the music room. She unlocked the door. She unlocked the piano. And Clifton sat down at a piano for the first time in his life. As he started to play, Pam pulled out her cell phone. And this is what she heard. <laughs> how he had learned to play the piano, he said, from YouTube. It turns out that Clifton has a very special gift. All of a sudden, all of those no's that he'd been hearing all of his life started to become a series of yeses. There are many stories about the way in which the school and his community have come behind him. But perhaps the most moving moment of all was on the last day of school when his mother came into the office and said to Pam, thank you for giving me the son I always knew I had. That Pam paused just for a second to really listen to Clifton has opened up a world of possibilities for him. It changed his life and it changed Pam's. Because now she's starting to wonder, what if I look for the Clifton in each of my children and each of the adults in my school? So, so maybe a culture of yes involves us pausing just for that second to listen a little bit more watchfully, to listen with our eyes as well as our ears, and to listen with our hearts as well as with our heads. I hope that I'll always remember the smile on Clifton's face, and I hope his story will remind me to look for strengths instead of deficits, to listen with compassion to the fear that underlines resistance, and to look for the possibilities that exist far beyond the limitations of no. Thank you.